Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing a titration. Now what we have here is a beaker of unknown. This is what we're going to be testing, what we're going to be measuring. This is um, sodium hydroxide. Um, we're going to titrate this and find the exact concentration of our sodium hydroxide and then we're going to use this to titrate um, an acid, so HCl or, or something or other. Um, whatever I have lying around, but the main, the main bit is finding the concentration, accurately finding the concentration of um, our sodium hydroxide. Now, the first step to titration is to select a suitable primary standard. Um, you should remember that the, the, the characteristics of what makes a suitable primary standard, um, the main, the most important thing is as you're weighing it, the standard the, the, in crystal form, it, it shouldn't be absorbing moisture from the air. Okay, so um, we've chosen oxalic acid because it's known to not absorb moisture in, from the air. Stay standard as you're weighing it. Sorry, it stays stable, chemically stable as you're weighing, weighing it. We can't use um, something like uh, sol solid sodium hydroxide crystals. We can't make this solution accurately because as you're weighing it, it's absorbing. H2O from, from the air. So that is, um, that's what makes NaOH unsuitable as a primary standard, but this is suitable. So the first step is accurately weighing out a suitable amount of oxalic acid. Now before I continue, I must note that I made this myself. So um, I, I prepared this, um, and I know its concentration is approximately around half a mole um, per liter, half a mole per liter. Okay, so it's around that ballpark. So that means I should, in order to make my titration more convenient, I should aim to make around the same, the same concentration for my oxalic acid. Okay, um, in terms of hydrogen ions. Now. Oxalic acid is a diprotic acid, that means if this is around half a mole per litre, I should be aiming to make around 0.25 moles per litre. Just to make, and you'll see why later, it makes your titration more convenient. So instead of, if you, if you made this 10 times more concentrated, you'll find that that single drop will be way too much to, you know, it should weigh past the equivalence point. So um, try to make the concentrations around equal in the same ballpark, it'll make your it will make your titration easier. Okay. So what we have here is our electronic scale. It's very accurate. Um, it's designed for these types of applications. So you, you can't use you know, your bathroom scale. You have to use one of these. Um, and we've got our little watch glass and a little spoon to scoop my oxalic acid into. Okay. So the first step, obviously, turn on your scale. Then put your watch glass on it and then press tear, which means it zeroes, it, it, it zeroes this mass. So if you take it off, it'll be a negative mass because it cancels out the mass it's expecting from the watch glass. This allows you to measure, it'll tell you exactly how much is actually on the watch glass. Okay. I've done some calculations to determine approximately what mass of oxalic acid I need to make a, a quarter of a mole per litre um, uh, concentration, which, which, as I said before, it will make my titration more easy. It's about, I need to weigh about 7 to 8 grams. Just scoop some in. That's about 2.6 grams. Careful not to spill any on the outside of your watch glass because that's that's going to be counted to your weight but not counted to your solution. So I have here 8.0 grams. We'll write that down. 8.0 grams. So the next step is to dissolve this into my volumetric flask. Now there's many ways to to do this. Um, some people prefer to get a separate beaker and dissolve it in there first and then put it in the volumetric flask and then rinse the beaker in, in, into you know, the residual into the, the flask. Um, that's like an extra piece of glassware that adds to inaccuracy. I prefer to just use the funnel. Okay? Um, so what I'll do is I will just 
push it in there and then this is distilled water so it doesn't have any impurities Whoops. And the point here is to transfer everything that I've weighed including the stuff left over in the watch glass That's, you've got to be careful you've got to also remember to include this So I've thoroughly rinsed my watch glass into the funnel and I'm going to continue to thoroughly rinse the sides of my th funnel just to ensure that everything I've weighed, all the oxalic crystals I've weighed are in solution. That's about, that's about ready to go. Um, to complete the dissolution, I'm just going to add some, some more distilled water. I'm going to fill it up, not yet, because this leaves some space for me to swirl it and speed up the dissolution. So I'm not going to fill it up to the mark yet, I'll do that after it's fully dissolved. I can still see heaps of crystals, solid crystals. So I'm going to swirl it until it's fully dissolved and then I'll make it up to the mark. So after about five minutes of this, you can see that it's completely clear now. There's no solid oxalic crystals in there anymore. So that is, I now need to make this up to the mark. And this bit, you've got to be a bit careful because if you overshoot the mark, you probably have to do the whole thing again. Well, not probably, you have to do the whole thing again. So when you get close, use, use this. Watch for parallax error. So when I'm really close, I have to make sure my eye level is parallel. Oops. Maybe one more drop. Um. Yes, perfect. That is up to the mark. The meniscus is above the line. The, um, the base of the base of the water level is at the line, which is correct. And that's how it's calibrated to be. So the next step is now we're going to transfer our standard, our dissolved standard, our oxalic acid solution, into our burette. The first step is to prime the well, to rinse the burette with the solution that you're that you're going to put in it. So I'm just gonna put a bit better close it. Okay. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to rinse it with the solution. Now what we've done here is we've just rinsed the burette with the solution, the standard. All right, careful not to use too much of it. I probably used a bit more than I needed to. The next step is to fill this with the standard up to a certain point. Um, no need to go, don't go beyond the zero. In fact, you don't even need to fill it up to the zero. Just remember where you start, okay? So we've filled our burette with our primary standard. The next step is to prime your burette. What that means is to get rid of this section of air here. This is all air. It's like one giant air bubble that we've got to get rid of. So how do you do that? You, the goal is to, well, the procedure is to let the solution out slowly, like so. See, that was done well. Um, and just to check that there's, there's still a small air gap in there. I just got to, it's just trial and error. Just let it out and stop it, let it out, stop it. So what I've done is I've successfully bled my burette. It's, um, there's no air bubbles in the, in the tip now. And um, what we've also done is we've rinsed the Erlenmeyer flask, the conical flask, with distilled water. Um, this flask, you don't need, just remember the, the, the flask where you're actually doing the titration, you don't need to rinse it with any solution, just rinse it with distilled water because it's the number of moles that matters going in. It's, it's, it's the number of moles, not the concentration. You will affect the concentration of the solutions going into it by leaving droplets in, 
but that doesn't matter as long as these droplets of water are distilled water, which I've made sure of. So what I need now is I need to add a measured amount, a measured volume of my unknown into my conical flask. So the, the, measured, the unknown was the sodium hydroxide and what I'll be doing is I'll be using a pipette to do that. So I'll just move this over here. Now this pipette needs to be rinsed with the solution. Um, because what we what we're trying to avoid is we're trying to avoid the um, we're trying to avoid altering the concentration of the NaOH as it enters the pipette. Okay. So now that we've rinsed our pipette with the solution with the base going to fill it up to the mark and this will give us 20 mils. So I've deliberately gone past the mark. So what I can do is I can let the excess out until it's uh, at the mark. And just to be careful with parallax Perfect. Transfer it into our flask. Don't force that last drop. See that last bit? Don't force it because that's how they calibrated it. So it's taken into account when they designed this glassware. And here we have exactly 20 mils of our base. I'm going to titrate this against our known primary standard solution.